So this is the second upload of the day. I know it's a gift that keeps on giving. Grab a piece of paper and let's go. Hello and welcome to MK's Medical Review Series. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevo. This is a series on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics in depth. Today we're going to be looking at an overview of amputations. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, hit the bell notification icon as well as hit the subscribe button. We're almost reaching 6,000 subscribers. Drop a comment, drop a like, grab a piece of paper and your pen and let's go. So here's a warm-up question which is a true or false. In an amputated limb, the following would account for pain in the stump. A, phantom limb, B, infected or ulcerated stump, C, sequestrum, D, neuroma. You may pause the video, write down your answers, scream at them at your screen, and let's go. So remember that amputation is pretty much a removal of a limb or an appendage from the body. So you can amputate a digit, you can amputate a whole hand, you can amputate a toe, you can amputate the foot, you can amputate part of the foot, you can amputate the leg. Okay, amputations are of different kinds. So there are certain indications that we do for certain amputations. So how I like you to remember it, just remember the Ds, the four or five Ds. So dead tissue, deadly or dangerous tissue, dying tissue, and a damn nuisance. So dead, meaning that the vitality of the limb is actually destroyed. So these are limbs which are dead because of atrial occlusion or stenosis, which can lead to tissue infarctions. So conditions like dry gangrene, which is caused by this arterial occlusion or stenosis, it may be arterial occlusion, which may be due to major vessels such as atherosclerotic or embolic occlusions or small vessels such as with diabetes, Berger's disease, Reynolds disease, or even egotism. And of course, with the de deadly or dangerous, this is of course life-saving to save this person's life. So for example, in wet gangrene with uh, putrefaction infection, gas gangrene, which is often caused by clostridium perfringes, necrotizing fasciitis, neoplasms such as anosteogenic sarcomas, extensive melanomas, Majolin's ulcers. You may have atriovenous fistulas where the life's patient is actually put uh, under threat by spreading of a local condition. You may have spreading cellulitis, uncontrolled sepsis, for example, a diabetic foot, uh, which may lead to a systemic infection. You may also have dying tissue, for example, severely lacerated um, wounds in the in the background of trauma, severe fractures. You may have patients that are partially amputated due to trauma or burns. Then you may have damn nuisance, which could either be deformed or due to neuropathy, for example, polydactyly, where they have extra digits. And then, of course, may be severely impaired gait. These are some of the indif indications that you must keep in mind of amputation but most of the indications that you see on the surgical wards are due to infections or di mostly diabetic foots. What are the types of amputations that we have? Here is a picture so you have a raised amputation which is here at this level then you may have a transmetatarsal amputation which is at this uh, level you may have a transmetatarsal amputation which is at this level here we may have a sims amputation which is at five sims is usually unstable so most surgeons actually don't rather don't really prefer it even this uh, transmetatarsal is actually also quite unstable most surgeons actually don't prefer it then of course you may have a mid uh, tarsal amputation you may have a below knee you may have a transcondylar which is through knee you may also have an above knee amputation you may also have a hip dislocation where you remove the entire leg or the entire lower limb what are some of the complications we may group them as early complications intermediate and late early complications include hemorrhage and hypovolemic shock you may have hematomas forming so remember that you're going to identify this by pain at the site swelling over the stump underneath the flap and of course there may be delayed healing and this can actually even precipitate infections and then they can have necrosis of the flap because it's under so much pressure and of course if we aspirate using a wide bore needle then uh, pressure dressing can be applied and then of course if the hematoma reforms after about two to three aspirations then it should be drained by opening up the wound at the corner and then reinserting a, um, or inserting hemostat into the wound and of course it may sometimes be 
infections which can actually be an early complication. Late complications include phantom limb. This is just simply a typical awareness of sensation that this limb that was amputated is still present partially or actually the entire limb is still present. The brain still has this feeling that the limb is there. So it's often having this uh, painful, disturbing or hyperesthetic feeling. The exact cause of this is not really known, but we actually think it's due to the presence of this severe pain at the amputated part just prior to amputation, making the brain actually alert um, this situation. And this is due to the cortical plasticity that happens in the brain, which is what we refer to as a phantom limb. We can actually reassure the patient, give them some prosthetics and even analgesics, which can actually help control the conditions. There are many psychological tests that can actually be done to help with the phantom limb. So, um, telescoping of the phantom limb where they is sometimes feeling that the amputated limb is getting shorter. Then you may have ulceration of the stump. You may have flap necrosis, which is due to poor blood supply. You may have stamp neuroma, where there is this uh, proliferation of the nerve endings, the nerve fibrils beyond the point of the nerve division. And then, of course, this is usually because there is failure to cut the nerve much more proximal at the level uh, of the division of the bone, such that this nerve endings will still keep dividing to some extent. So here there's going to be pain and tenderness over the stump, and usually we're going to relieve this by analgesics, reassurance. We can sometimes even use prosthesis. Prostate prosthesis rather. Then of course, occasionally it may require re-exploration of the wound, excision of the end neuroma, and even cutting of the nerve much more proximally. Other complications include painful scars, stump pain, which is often attributed either to infections, poor blood supply, coxalgia, stump neuromas, phantom limbs, DVTs, adherent scars, formation of spurs, which is the bone osteophytes at the amputated bone end. And then of course, you may also have sequestrum formation, which is the dead bone. Then of course, contractures of the joint of the amputated stump is another complication. You may have deformities and eventually keloids and hypertrophic scars. Coming back to our warm up question, in an amputated limb, the following would account for pain in the stump. Phantom limb is true. Infected or ulcerated stump, which is also true. Sequestrum is also true. We just talked about them in the previous slide. And neuroma is also true, which I talked about in the previous slide. I really hope you enjoyed this very brief video on amputations. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such videos every time I post. See you in the last video of the day. To Zambia and beyond, my name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. Until next time, bye-bye.